Okay, moving on to the right hand shelf. Up here is Civilization Chronicles. I believe it's one to four. There's a disc missing, but I'm pretty sure it was just a quid in a charity shop, so I thought I'd grab it anyway. Uh, here's the Fallout Collector's Edition Fat Man thing with Fallout uh, 1, 2, 3 and New Vegas. Um, for some reason I was expecting this to have actual discs with data on them. However, all you get is Steam codes, so that was a really disappointing when I got it. But I guess that's how things are going now. Um, here's another Collector's Edition thing, or what Konami like to call Collector's Edition. Uh, it's my little cover for Metal Gear Solid 5. Okay, top left here for the PS2 we have Animal Soccer World. If you haven't heard of it, I suggest you look up a video because it is hilarious. Alien vs Predator Extinction, that's a real-time strategy which is actually really surprisingly good. To the right of that we have uh, Breath of Fire Dragon Quarter, which is my favourite Breath of Fire, you might be surprised to know. I love how they changed the combat up um, and made it more movement oriented, I guess. Psy Girls, very bad game published by Konami. Uh, Dark Chronicle, that's level 5 of course. Devil May Cry 3, which is my favourite and uh, I believe it's Aaron's favourite Devil May Cry as well. We'll definitely be doing a video on those games at some point. Now this is possibly the most beautiful game I own, Unlimited Saga. I'll show inside the box on the more in-depth video. Um, for now I'll just say that it's a terrible game, but I'm glad it's in my collection. <laughs> Dog's Life, highly recommended. Dragon Quest VIII, of course. Possibly my favourite PS2 game, although it's hard to pick. Drakengard 1 and 2. Enter the Matrix, I used to play that so much as a kid. Um, here are the Final Fantasies, Dirge of Cerberus, I really enjoy that game. Um, the story is pretty darn terrible, but uh, in terms of gameplay, I think it's probably one of the best spin-offs that we've had. Uh, Gun is a game, of course, very similar to Red Dead Redemption. Um, it's definitely worth checking out. It's not quite as like open and in-depth, I guess you would say, as Red Dead. However, the story is a lot more focused and possibly even better than um, Red Dead Redemption, I would say. Kingdom Hearts, of course, and Peter Jackson's King Kong, which I really, really like as a first-person shooter. Um, not so much the King Kong parts of the game, um, but I what I love about this game is that it has no HUD, which I think a lot more first-person shooters need to do. Legacy of Kain, one of my favourite series, um, in my opinion the greatest story that has ever been told in video games and it needs to have a sequel. Manhunt I absolutely loved, uh, Manhunt 2, not quite sure what they were thinking with that one. Um, it's pretty terrible and broken and nothing really like the first one to be honest. Here we have Okami, uh, the Onimusha games, which are basically a feudal Japanese version of uh, Resident Evil, which is quite interesting. Uh, and then Parappa the Rapper 2, which I only knew was a thing a couple of years ago when I bought this. I had no idea it had a sequel until quite recently. Uh, not as good as the first, but worth a play. Down here we have Kuon, which is a horror game set in feudal Japan. Sounds awesome, I haven't played it yet. Um, I believe it's factory sealed. Uh, it's got Spanish writing on it and things, so uh, not sure whether it's resealed or factory sealed to be honest. Primal is probably a must have I'd say on the PlayStation 2. Great adventure game. Um, Psychonauts, probably another one. And then further on we have Code Veronica, which is, which I believe is probably the hardest Resident Evil, and I'm sure lots of people would agree with me, um, but one of the best as well. And then Ring of Red, which is absolutely terrible. Do not buy that game. <laughs> so here we have Rogue Galaxy, and next to that we have the Shadow Hearts trilogy. Um, I bought those together along with the PS3 game Folklore for about 15 quid, and that was when I first started collecting games. Uh, it's the biggest steal I've ever had. Uh, then there's the Silent Hill collection, which unfortunately does not have Silent Hill 1 in it, 
uh, which I still need to rebuy. Star Ocean till the end of time, one of my favourite games ever, definitely in my top 10 I would say. Time Splitters of course, one of the greatest first person shooter series, if anything only because of the amount of content in there, all the different bonus things you can unlock, all the different game modes and the level editor as well. Wallace and Gromit Curse of the Were Rabbit, um, in my opinion that is the most fun uh, multiplayer game, at least on the PS2. Xenosaga Episode 2, I really want the other games in this series. Unfortunately, the only one that was that came out in the UK is this one, and all the others were exclusive to Japan or America. <laughs> Final PS2 game here is Hitman Contracts, which I got at um, Cash Converters, and it seems that a kid has drawn this and replaced it with what once was the actual box art. <laughs> Moving on to the PS3 then, Alone in the Dark Inferno, I believe is a very underrated game and with just a few tweaks, could have been one of the best on the PS3 I would say, to be honest. Binary Domain is a third person cover shooter, it's one of the best I've played. Uh, it's also far, far better than Vanquish. Um, Beyond Two Souls I actually have the Platinum Trophy for, along with Skyrim. I believe that they're the only two games. Oh no, actually, uh, The Saboteur over here, um, which is a really good game, which I don't think many people have played. I have the Platinum Trophy for this as well. Uh, moving on, we have Enslaved Odyssey to the West, which is by Ninja Theory, a developer that I believe is one of the best around at the moment. Folklore, another one that I'm not sure too many people have played. However, it has literally the best use ever of the uh, motion controls of the 6-axis and is also just a generally brilliant RPG. Jericho was reviewed um, quite poorly, however, I think it's one of the best first-person shooter horror games out there, to be honest, and I love the way that they did the whole team aspect of it, how you could swap between the characters and play as a team. Uh, now here we have one of the worst games ever created, um, it's definitely one of the worst games I own uh, and also the most boring, I should get rid of it really to be honest. Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch, um, definitely one of the best games on the PlayStation 3. If you haven't played it I don't know why, it's level 5 for Christ's sake, go do it. So I found this the other month at um, a convention. Uh, never really heard of it before and I haven't played it yet but um, definitely doing a video on this when I actually get round to playing it. Sleeping Dogs, I keep telling my friend to play this who's obsessed with Grand Theft Auto and believes Grand Theft Auto 4 is a good game. Um, I think otherwise to be honest and Sleeping Dogs is a billion times better than Grand Theft Auto 4 is, that's for sure. Uh, Valkyria Chronicles, definitely a unique game that needs to be played by more people. Uh, and Yakuza 4, which is one of the best games ever. And one of the biggest in terms of like the amount of content you get in there. A few more system games here, uh, next to Sonic the Hedgehog and Golden Axe, which are boxed. So there's Psycho Fox, which is possibly my favorite mass system game, Outrun. Um, a few sports games. Uh, I've had these since I was about six or seven, so I wasn't as adverse to sports as I am now. The Ninja, which is one of the hardest games I've ever played. I don't think I've ever got past the first level on the Ninja. Now we have some PC games, um, Age of Empires. I'm a massive fan of all sorts of real-time strategy games, to be honest. Um, Command and Conquer is definitely my favorite. Kane's Wrath is the one I play the most. Um, Command and Conquer 4 was a piece of shit, as I'm sure you know if you know anything about Command and Conquer. Dark Souls, PC version, is ruined by games for Windows and is unplayable, so let's brush past that. I love all these theme games by Bullfrog, um, every single one of them I've played so much. PC version of Tomb Raider with the uh, unfinished business exclusive content, um, got that in a charity shop for a quid which I was quite happy with. The Witcher I also got for a quid and then there's this. War of the Worlds, which was in a charity shop as well. 
Now, there are actually more PC games behind here, but um, let's move on so I can show you something a bit more interesting. So here are my Japanese Super Famicom games. Um, probably the crown jewel of my collection at the moment. Beautiful box art all around, and you actually used to get a lot more in the boxes like not only did you get instructions but it's all artwork and everything inside which I'll show in the next video. So there's Final Fantasy V which is actually one of my favourite Final Fantasies. I actually like it above 6 which is <laughs> quite a rare opinion to have I'd say. Final Fantasy VI which has a bit of a different style in the artwork and 4. I'm a massive fan of uh, simplistic box arts like this, I absolutely love that. Romancing Saga, it's uh, a series that I've never actually played, but I'm sure they're very good. And just look at this, I mean, that is one of the best box arts of all time, surely. And then there's Dragon Quest V and VI, which again, I'm pretty sure it's the same artist who does Dragon Ball Z. Always seems to design great box arts where video games are concerned. So that's it as far as the games are concerned in my collection. Um, there's still a few bits and bobs here and there that I haven't shown, such as the magazines and things like that. Hope you enjoyed it and weren't put off too much by my monotone voice. Uh, be sure to check out the next video where we'll be going more in depth into some of the things like the Drake and Guard Collector's Edition, seeing what's inside those.